Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Grime and Gameplay's Disco Elysium. As always, I'm your host, Nutchucks, and with me as always... Your bookstore curator, provider, and consigliere, Brabeat. And not Coinbeaner this time? Coinbeaner had a, a absence of health. Um, he shit his brains out a little bit. It happened. It's fine. It did. All hey, right. Chucks. Yeah. Hey, Chuck. Hey, um, um, hey, Chucks. Um, go in your inventory. Uh, can you please find your detective ledger for me, please? It should be one of your tools or items. Psych, it's your interact bar. Uh huh. Which, yeah. one, which uh -huh. one are you looking for? Which one are you wanting to do? Go back to your inventory. Uh huh. Then find your ledger, top row, third in. Oh, Good. There we are. Yeah, there you go. Interact with that. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Yeah. Anything else? I think I got it. Put the ledger away. Let's go with one. Uh... There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. Below the pathetics, terror. Do not look into its blue heart. Inspect the toilet paper. Inspect the clip. Browse the white papers. Browse the yellow papers. Look at the clipboard. <laughs> Smell the ledger. Put the ledger away. Put the candle back. No! <laughs> Yeah, let's inspect the toilet it's paper. It's just toilet paper. Stick it to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Take it off. Leave it there. It's cool. Maybe it's kitchen tissue. They look exactly the same. Mm, let's take it off. Still wet, the toilet paper peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off with your finger and voila. The ledger now looks marginally better so chucks mm -hmm. i hit a situation where i couldn't tell what i needed to do for the next thing and the answer to that thing is number one and it might happen for us and it might not but i thought to myself this really should happen so i encourage you to inspect the clip oh that's what i was about to do an aluminium block runs the width of the board biting down on the paperwork its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Run your finger across the aluminum. Enough of the clip. Back. Nope, let's run our fingers Hold across. Hold on. Did I say aluminum? I'm so sorry. It's aluminium! The European version. Indeed. Let's do that, though. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Hey, Lieutenant, uh, what's this? Point to the sticker. What? That thing. It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. Hmm, interesting. What kind of information? How can I read it? That's all, thank you. Going one again. It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. Your kill count. Yours will surely have your kill count. Oh, fuck! Half-Light! Let's find out. Let's, uh... How can I Any read it? capable light with the right wavelength will do. Like, for example? All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. Uh -huh. 
For Lieutenant fears this will lead to fiddling with the delicate folding headlights on his motor carriage. They're dear to him. <laughs> you are a more of sexual. Okay. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. But not exactly it's a white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines, forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, Case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Is two cases a week a good caseload, Lieutenant? There was a mention of a uh, naming convention here. Count the pages. I have to open an official case. Is the room? I'm done, in done inspecting these. Close the case. Let's find out what Kitsuragi thinks. Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Two cases a week appears to be my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure if I completed them, though. Nod and return to the case notes. Let's uh, go on. Two. That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. I'm sure I made plenty of mistakes. I burned out, all right. A nice, brisk pace, the way I like it. I'm thinking one or three. Your call? It's, it's going okay. Again. We all make mistakes. God knows I've made my share. He tries not to think of them. Oh, fuck! Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense. If mostly illegible. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. Oh my. And they're written in capital letters too. I don't wanna. Back to the case files. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the Unsolvable Case. More? Others appear more lighthearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the hookah parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. You like this grimy murdering, don't you? Fuck it's yeah! It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. Mm -hmm. Kim? Let's go with that. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? That's the one. Lie. No, I mean a non-numeric one with titles. Yeah, we're gonna tell the truth. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. <laughs> What's that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. 
I seem to have one named a case. Uh, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Don't mention it. Mm, we're going one again. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that to amuse myself. Oh, shit. Kim's a human. Oh, shit. Ones never find out. That's real. For a second there, before I eat this. Tell me, Chucks. Kim just revealed to you that he is privy to a similar predation or tendency. What do you feel? That's how a lot of cops work, actually. That's how you're taught. So I'd understand completely. Well, you're, you're taught a system. But then when you're in the field, your humanity still comes through. So you're taught, just do the thing. And then you get there, you look at it, and you get your notes, and you say, uh, here's a piece of me in the middle of this case. So a lot of cops do that. Like the whole with the murder in the head thing. We'll know what is that. Because our dark sense of humor with all the gross shit we see uh, comes through when we have to. And it's not an aspect to make fun of anything. It's just to keep us human, I guess. Because if you see enough I... of that shit, it's going to start fucking with you. And if you don't start getting a dark sense of humor or something that you make jokes about, it's going to start messing with you. So seeing this, it makes actually a lot of sense being a cop. Like why, I agree. Why he would name it that way. Like, oh, the guy with the hole in his head. It's fucked up. I've, they will never see it. It's something personal for me, and it's something you can name the case to give you notes and hints in your head which case it is if you're ever looking into it. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I I get it, and it makes sense that he would do something similar to him. It does make sense. There's a guy, and he's dead. There's a hole in his head. That's just how it goes. Yep. Well, what happened to him? That's such a silly question. Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was worth How? What the fuck? How did a rail spike go through his head? You punched those down. How did that go up into his face and through him? Well, there was a, a story there. There is. Have you ever heard about the guy who had a rail spike go through his head and he went from being a really nice guy to a complete jackass? Yeah, Mr. Phineas, whatever the fuck. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. But again, the question it says the spikes are metal pieces that are pointy at one and they kind of flatten the other and they're about 10 inches long and they get beat the fuck down with flat objects into the ground. So how the fuck does an object that go down shoot up into a person? Who the fuck what? Why? Chucks. Answers. Uh, Could have been at the rail yard or something and they had TNT to set up a, a, a rail set up. And it, something happened where the TNT went off and it blew a rail spike through his head. Oh, like uh, workers going, you know, hitting this with a hammer is cool and all, but it will take 63 hammer hits to get this spike to go down. But this uh, seven ounces of TNT will just make that happen for us if I let it right. So Phineas, come on down here, hold the match. I'm sure it'll go well. Blam, splat, motherfuck. Right? So, that's that's the story? Yeah, essentially. It's almost... I, I feel it'd be something along the lines like that. Or, I, I don't know if you've ever heard about the guy who died by taking an air compressor that blows air out. Like, they have a little nozzle so you can clean stuff off. And he stuck it in his pants, had his ass crack being funny, and instead he ruptured his butthole and died. Well, I, he ruptured uh, his colon I, and died. Because it was such highly compressed air. Sure. I was about to say butt stuff. But then you, you confirm butt stuff, and so all of my humor died away. And I thought, yeah, that happened. Yeah, people, that's actually a common workplace accident. People taking air compressors, thinking, oh, it's nice, cool air. Not really how, realizing how highly compressed it is. And when they shoot it down their pants or their legs, it actually ruptures the skin off and will splay their skin open and cause severe injuries. So yes. kids, don't fuck around with air compressors. Death. Cause of death. <laughs> Colon, air compressor, colon, colon. <laughs> I dig it. Okay, option four, count the pages. I haven't. There is You've already read precisely it. one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Commit to paper! Back to the case files. Nope, commit to paper. The tasks you've completed flow out of the pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. 
a language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Get the body down. Interview the cafeteria manager. Cross out the ones you've already finished. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. And a what if you did none of those? To you too. That last one cuts a slash right through the paper. Fuck to you! What if you did none of those? Nothing happened. You met Kim and said, cool, 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 cool. And then five days passed and none of those happened. What's up with that? Uh, probably really bad morale hit. Probably. Things to be done and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizens' militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? The Hanged Man! The furries are at home in the mirror. The setting sun. Shit on a stick. No. Try again. Shh. Do you want me to yell it? No, I want you to make it seem like it matters. Shit on a stick. Can I try? Yeah. Shit on a stick. No, you wanted it like that. Okay. I did. I got you. Actually, I don't have one. I'm thinking two. Try what you want. I mean, that's like one of those author insertion things. Hmm. Let's go to Furies. Yes. Oh, it's well, Furies, my bad. I don't know. I have to be honest. I'm not experiencing the internal strife that it refers to. And also, could you make it less poetic somehow? Just a normal case name, you know? Think, what would that be? A good normal name. Ah, yes. I have to tell you, officer, I don't appreciate ironic titles. Other officers will have to use this as reference. If it's idiot or cockfinger. Cockfinger! They're not going to get it. They're going to think an idiot and a cockfinger were on this case. So, do you have something less funny? What is wrong with shit on a stick? Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking, too. The Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. Now, the only thing I can think of as they're shouting back and forth to each other with these names, the bookstore and her, the bookstore keeper and her daughter are just sitting there listening to this crazy-ass conversation. Like, what in the ever-loving fuck is going on? Well, the daughter has to do her math homework and the bookkeeper is saying, Please buy some books and you're shutting Cockfinger. I'm going to hold shell the Cockfinger novels over on the left. Yeah, about that. <laughs> All right, let's continue. I'm going to start calling it the Hanged Man. It's good we sorted this out. Hmm, he did it. You don't exactly close them so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Let's try it. It's proving to be Fuck you. unexpected. You just don't have the intellectual rigor to patch the quilt back together. Try again later. We'll have to raise our logic. Indeed. I think we're good for now reading our ledger. I still want you to inspect the clip. That clip. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. It's uh -huh, number one. Are the only thing the surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's yeah. Right. What? That thing. It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information okay. to our now what? Two. Two. Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. All our CM uh -huh. vehicles have headlights. The lieutenant fears this will lead to fiddling with the delicate folding headlights on his motor carriage. Uh -huh. to him. Well, that's a thing. Number three. Okay. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. Should we smell the ledger? 
Up to you, man. This is your the ledger. The stench of rotting Oof. food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself, and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. Oh, let's put it away. Sure. It stays with you until you do some stuff. That's good. That thing, that thing is elusive. It honestly is. All right, let's get out of here. Sure. I would like for you to read those watermarks because your detective has information they don't know about anymore that your partner may have perspective upon. Hmm. Is it critical? No, not really. But I thought to myself, I want you to know this. Hey, that's the Kanima. Kanima Kubri. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Kim, how do I turn on the headlights? All right. Ready? I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. He's downplaying his excitement. The lieutenant is more than happy to show off his precious carriage. Ha <laughs> ha! lights up with orange glow. What? Press the button. Labeled headlights. The lights unfold with a little click, casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. All right, Chucks. Embrace your reality. As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is. Reva West. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. Look at the shimmering st street grid. Look at the perforations. Perforations, perforations, excuse me. Let's there the are many of them, and they are divided into three separate rows. Tally up the different rows. Let's look at something else. The first row has 18 dots. Not bad. What about the next one? What about the next one? The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border, and then some. Count them individually. There are so many, it's hard to count. More than 150, at least. Maybe even 200. What about the last row? The last row has three perforations. Three? That's it? That's it. Look at the shimmering street grid. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. Wait, look around you. Where are we on this? Point to the halogen map. You catch a faint glimmer from a broken beer bottle. In the distance, sounds. Two men engaged in a drunken argument, followed by the closing of some distant window. In the middle of a broken plaza, illuminated in a cone of light, two men, one slim, the other sturdy. They are on the city stage, but only one of them knows his lines. Ah, Martinez at night. <laughs> He smells the air and sighs. Let me see. He takes a ledger for a moment and inspects it. Right here. He says, his finger near the top of the map, on a segment of coast jutting into the ground. Great ocean. Seems nice. Seems like a shithole. I'm sure I've seen worse. 
Let's go on. No, it does not. <laughs> Lieutenant says with that optimism. Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? Wait. 18 years I've done this? Got drunk like a megastar. I walked the land, telling whores and liars of the end to come. There are 9,855 days remaining. Probably a, oh, excuse me, probably, probably a some boring office job. A some boring office job? Wow, that's an awkward sentence. Same as everyone else. I feel like I just went around apologizing all the time. Do you really think I have any idea? Jux, it's your detective. Without my involvement. Go ahead. I'm going one, because I feel like he'd be shocked that he's done this for 18 years. I mean, would you have, Chux? 18 years of detective work? Wait, hang on. No, never mind. Uh, 15 years beat cop. Three years detective work. That sounds about right. Yeah. That's what it says. I might have guessed even longer based on your age. What did you do all those blissful years of your youth? Go ahead. Hmm. We're going to. Cool. I'm glad you joined us. Not a lot of money in doom crying. Let's move on, shall we? This next row, no. the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see. Kim, 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 but no, but the apocalypse is coming. Kim, Whoa, more listen. Than 200. Fuck! Is that a lot? I would have thought there'd be more. Let's go one. I feel like that's... It's quite a lot. Even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. See, Kim? I told you I was a superstar cop. I used to be good. That's some solace, I guess. What's the last number? I don't think I can ever re-become this person. What's the last number? I feel two. Right. Those are your confirmed kills. You've got precisely three perforations there. You killed three people! What the fuck?! Confirmed kills. That sounds pretty evil. A drink would soften that feeling. So, I'm a killer. I was expecting a higher number, honestly. That's not too many. Is now a good time to pour, uh, pour one out for the fallen? <laughs> <laughs> Natty Light 50 ounce, here we go! I feel one. That's right. A killer of humans. For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the Jamra Quarter, it's rather tame. I mean that in a good way. What's it feel like to kill a man, Mr. McCoy? A young woman asked the man across the desk from her. Honestly, babe, says John McCoy, crossing his ankles over said desk. I don't feel anything anymore. It's just like brushing my teeth. I do it once or twice a week and don't really think about it. There's no trace of guilt in his voice. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. He's sincerely glad you're not a scary predator. Not to say relieved you're competent. Have you ever killed anyone, Kim? How do you handle the strain? Maybe I should pour one after the boys. The Fallen? Thanks for this. Let's find out how many Kim's killed. Yes. 
declining to elaborate. It's not a problem for him to state it, however. Mm. Okay. Let's find out. Everyone how. has their own method of coping. Some more effective or self-destructive than others. He gives you a meaningful look. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Like what? Maybe I should find a hobby. Hobbies are lame. Oh, this and that. Let's not get into it now. Why not gardening? You've already got the yellow gloves. Ha <laughs> ha! It's meant in earnest. Please don't mistake it for a jab. Him? You're a fucking car nerd. <sighs> If you want to pour out the booze you've been carrying around on duty, I'm certainly not going to stop you. Pour one out on the ground, ceremonially. Actually, I'm just going to hold on to this. Glug, glug, glug. As you will. I'm going to hold on to it. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. The lieutenant nods. Okay. Right. I'll go turn off the light. All right, Chucks, you've learned about more about your detective. He did a bunch of cases. He'd been there almost two decades, and he killed three dudes. Only three in 20 years. That's pretty good, I think. What do you think? Yeah, it sounds about right. A lot of people, your goal is not to kill anybody. That's a good goal. That's a really good goal. You should, like, do that. That's That's my plan. Not to kill anybody. But if you kill someone, make sure they're the same skin tone as you are. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Is it time for that yet? You could check on the dice. That's fine. It is. <laughs> the time hath come! Hey, that door you unlocked by being like a super sleuth. Indeed. This game, this game is dense. And then you've been playing it for like a bunch of episodes. At least three. At least three episodes. And you've been thinking things like, I know what's going on. I'm cool. I'm good. I'm fantastic. Fuck you, game. And then you encountered the writing in this game and thought to yourself, I'm sorry. Here's my penis. Please stroke it good. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what I thought. Similar to. Th Good idea. <sighs> if somebody out there paid the electrical bill, this would be easier. But the answer is, nobody pays the bill. Again, are you looking for a die? Not time enough. Maybe tomorrow. Oh, it's you. Again. The heck, it's been eight hours. No, it hasn't. Twenty-two. I mean, I'm sorry. Twenty-two hundred. I'm two hours. This is early. a very dense, dense adventure. This is eight p.m. on a Tuesday. What do you do? You got time. I do so. Let's go take a look around. I mean, sources say on Wednesday, uh, the water lock gets repaired. As a result, more of the map happens. But you've got your own stuff to care of. Let's... We gotta find a bigger crowbar, for one. See Very true. Yes. Bigger crowbar. A pry tool worthy of our challenge. Indeed. Take a look at the your book. Yeah, look at it. Oh, wait, on the right there. Do you see what it says? That shit wasn't there before. No, no, it was not. 216. Hmm. That's a fucking lot, though. That is a lot. It seems like you're a communist ahead of all other things you've said before. 
I'm a communist and a fascist. You are, absolutely. And oh. a ultra liberal. Yep. Good cop, bad cop, seven. Honor, one. Your honor is suffering. You should get some more honor into your life. I'm more of a sorry cop than I am a superstar cop. Man, I'm sorry about that. We asked Renee about the photo, didn't we? Ask him again, motherfucker. It's only 9 p.m. Go to the old man and say, hey, dude, is this the bitch you wanted to fuck one day? Let's do that. Let's start playing. It, like, explicitly in those words, please tell him. Please ask him. I like playing in the dark. Sharpens your nocturnal instincts. Feels like being on recon again. Is the game reacting to time of day? Is it saying it's past 5 p.m.? Ho ho! Alright, well, composure, like, what is it about? Mm hmm. Your wardrobe, if you want to. Still, nope. All you see is an old soldier refusing to replace his uniform with a civilian attire. Anything else I can assist you with, officer? We still have a I game see. to finish. Yeah, Ptonk. Honk is very important. Yes. It's like the noise of the balls hitting the ground. What noise does your balls make when hitting the ground? Uh, depends on the ball. True. Lefty or righty? Uh, well, close it out. Uh, hmm. Check your skill points. You should have one or something. You have three! Oh, God. Well, um, like, um, ah, uh, check your thoughts. You have anything that you really want to learn? Nothing. Okay. Well, if you want to, you could raise some of your other thoughts or your abilities at this time. I you could burn, like, two points. Let's, let's bump up composure. If you want to, sure, yeah. So we can get that. That'll unlock I the mean, You could always do speed instead. I That's could. cool, right? Yeah, it is. Just go ahead and do drugs. It solves everything. Literally. Well, let's take a look. What do we have? Any of these bump up composure? That's a good instinct. Go ahead and do that. No. No. Nope. 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 The shoes are the only I'll try again. Hmm. Yeah. What are the other ones we can do? Punching the clock. <laughs> hmm. We could try ceiling fan. <laughs> Did you get your tie yet? Not yet. Oh, shit. Well, do that. Let's, uh... Let's bump up Suave Fair. Savoir? Savoir Fair. S Savvy? Oh shit. Let's do that. On your left. Oh. Large button that says accept changes in clothes. Yeah, that's the one. Well, let's go. Because all we can do is one. Let's go back at the whirling and rags. Hmm. As long as your room is unlocked and stuff. It should be. I hope so. Oftentimes in my less peaceful moments, I think to myself, man, the whirling of rags is a pretty good set of feels. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. 
Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. Let's try it. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning. The necktie is no longer contained. What kind what of person would have put a necktie on there? A colorful tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. Oh, fuck. Clothes. Oh, you got it already on your neck. Yep. You had nothing else in your neck slot. Click on it. The necktie is adorned with a garish pattern. It's disturbingly vivid. Somehow, you feel as if it would be wrong to ever take it off. It's your friend now. You will betray it if you change it for some boring scarf. <laughs> Plus one in that empire. Vivid imagination. So, Chucks, you've spent two days in this world without this tie. I'm just going to tell you, you fucked up. Like, you fucked up hard. This tie right here, this tie right here. See on the left where it says int, psi, fizz, moat? On the upper left, psi says five, and you didn't get this tie up on day one. That tie is a character. You missed two days of presence in this world without the horrific necktie. I did. It's okay. Honestly, it's okay. You fucked up, but it's all right. Days three and four, I'm sure would give you some sort of benefit with having that necktie upon you. Um, possibly telling you what's up. Alright. Got the necktie. You did it. Check your uh, log map again. For your challenges. Aren't you glad you bought that map? I am. Who told you to do that? You did good, sir. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. It was me. Tommy Kuno, Kuno. I want to name my first child to Kuno. Empathy, what's our empathy at? Five is pretty good. Yeah, but it won't let me. I think it's blocked off. So do we level it up and try to go after it? Uh, I have a complicated feeling about that. I would say no, but you can do what you like. Or do we go after Tommy? Those the the light gray challenges on your map are those that are have uh, are are open to be tested again. They could be conquered, but they're not locked. Hmm. The feeling in general is that there is a optimal path through a lot of these things, but that path is not open to you as yet. So you can try them, absolutely. You won't succeed until you spend skill points. So you can go outside of the whirling and then go to Tommy. No, no, don't spend him. No, don't do the thing. Just come across it. And then say, I can't do it anymore. And then reach into yourself and say, mm, I want to eat a skill point. And then produce a uh, chocolate chip cookie. and Eat the cookie and say, I got a skill point. And then do the thing. You have to make abstracts real. Don't you know? What is this? It's closed for the winter. Also, it's 8 p.m. in the uh, whirling, which means Disco Ball comes up. I've noticed. Maybe sometime during the game, you might find a reason to sing the disco in the whirling if oh. you get the right tape. Yeah, we got to find the right tape. You do, you do, you do. But it's basically impossible on Tuesday. Good talk to Tommy. Tommy? In the rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? Ease into nope. it. Nope. Don't go too far. This seems like man. a personal matter. You look sad. What's up with you? I'm okay, man. Just the jams got me down. The fumes, the chemical rainbows, the tarpaulin stretched on the frames and the dull engines off. 
maybe the full-on direct approach wasn't correct. Damn, it's tricky business looking into someone's eyes and not doing it wrong. Oh, nope. if you really want to up empathy, could, but it's a choice, not a solution. Hmm. We want to see what happens if we bump up a physical instrument and see if we can go back and pry that thing open. Which thing? The, let's see, it is the ice cream maker. What do I have on that's killing my physical instrument? Biz instrument? It's a few things. That's plus one. But remember, that check for the freezer is mm -hmm. minus 10. It's minus 10. It's fuck you till you get the right instrument. Ah, uh, I gotcha. You can try, but you probably won't win. I probably will not. Well, fuck it then. Let's go to the map. Which one should we do? Mirror? Well, that's your expression, sure. You did bear. Uh, hangman. That's later on. Well, there's two. What mirrors. about the container? You can try that. Which one? The cargo container. With rhetoric. Let's see what we have to bump up rhetoric. No, it's minus one rhetoric. No. Nope. Nothing. Get me. Gotta go in the door. Sorry, Buckman. You're just a plebe. And me here, I'm a character. I get more points than you. Forever. That's your life. Enjoy. Keep on marching. That flashlight will keep you dry. I promise. Despite the rain. This container, right? That's the one. You're back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If mm. anything, oh. it seems to have grown slightly. That's fucking awful, but try it anyway. And as it's always been. It's impossible to open a container with rhetoric. Maybe you're losing your mind. Hmm. Okay. I gotta hit 18 in rhetoric. That's gonna be kind of hard. Depending. Sure. We can go to the mirror. In your hotel room. Sure. Try it. Your detective seems lost, officer. My detective seems lost. Why do you say that, sir? Uh, he's just kind of bumbling about for a couple of days, thinking, who killed the hangman? Followed by, what do I do now? Well, now we know who killed the hangman. Yeah, you're right. All the Hardy Boys. They all killed him. Everyone. Together. At once. Yep.
Let's go check that mirror back out and see what happens. Your face is what happens. You're off foot to my face style. Hmm. Yes. After you call me Betty, because that is my name. <laughs> you may call me Betty. Uh, encyclo encyclopedia. I mean, that is what I said, for sure. But then you said it, and that was funnier. That's how it works, right? Uh, in my experience, yes. Pretty much every time. Good, good, good. As long as we're on the same page. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh. Alright, let's go take a look at our self in the mirror. What? You look like a cop. End of conversation. I feel like that's what it's gonna... Oh, that's not the mirror. That's the door. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Fuck it. Try them all. I don't care. It's like something snaps in you. A nerve ending. A thought. A sadness. Your face in the mirror is suddenly clean of the layer that had distorted it for God knows how long. Look at Just the bottom like left. that, it's over. The running gag that your life had become. A sad old man looks back at you. Do you see it, Chucks? Bottom left, do you see it? Yeah, I did. His face changed. What did it do? Looked like he kind of got sadder. His eyes are more sunk in. You can't see his face. There's no more smiling. You mean, did he fucking change? Did he stop the expression? Yep. Oh, God! The rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. Uh huh? Uh huh. Well, listen. Your detective is not smiling anymore. Pretty much forever. That's gone now. Because he did that. Fuck you, dude. Tool not in hand. Well, you do need to have the chain cutters slash vice grips to fix the thing. That's but true. uh resolve them within yourself. I mean, 15 years ago, you made the expression. And then it was 15 years later, and you're still doing it. And the world says, dude, why are you doing that? So, there you go. You exerted some will. And you made your face not do that anymore. And the result is, I wish I was still doing that. Should we go punch a cell phone? Or punch a clock or a payphone? In the harbor? You could try. Sure. Is it in the harbor? It's back this way. Yes. Oh. I mean, it's, 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 it's past the door in the lobby of the harbor. Yeah. The last 15 minutes of this episode is going to be us trying to get all this stuff complete. Listen, in the middle, a lot of games um, stall out a little bit. When they say, what am I doing this again for? How does Chucks feel about Martinez at this point? Uh, poor desolate country that got shit on. So, terrible. When you say country, do you mean neighborhood? Yes, excuse me. Wait, wait, wait. So it was back this way. So yeah. Harbor. Oh. Are you going to the harbor? Far right. Far right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrong. Uh-oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Everyone's, well, not everyone's actually. The racist lorry driver is still there for you, as well as the scab leader. So where the hell Who, is that paper? Uh, go up. Past uh, Manana. Call me Manana. There you go. In that door. Oh, that's right. We got that special bonus where we get uh, 
for punching items. Sure. Something like that. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, punching inanimate objects. We got that boost because of that. Oh, yeah, the anti-object task force. Absolutely. That's the, the phone. already familiar cold touch of plastic welcomes you. Your fingers run over... Fuck you, phone! Zero, zero, five. That's the dialing code for Revachol. Four, nine, five, two and a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers. Nine, nine, three. Calling. Calling. Still calling. Then. Video Revachal, 24 hour video rental. You rent eight and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lummy, how may I help you? What is this place? Video Revachal is a 24 hour video rental. You rent eight and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lummy. No, I meant what is this place to me? Do you know me? Why did I call you? Sir, I don't know. It's a video rental. Maybe you rent videos here. No. Maybe you call to extend your rental period? Do you need to extend your rental period? My name is Rafael Ambrosius Gusto. Do you have anything on my name? My name is Harry Dubois. Do you have anything on my name? Quietly hang up the phone and leave. I'm surprised, Jux, you didn't say Harry Dubois. No, 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 that's Dubois. I'm not that ill, Ill cultured. I should say number one, honestly. Yeah, I'm going to. Raphael, what? Listen, I can't help you over the phone. If you need further assistance, you can visit us on the corner of Voyager and Main. Are we done? He thinks you're pulling a prank on him. On the corner of Voyager and Main, a large neon sign hangs on the side of a building. Video Revachol, 24 hours. It's raining and there is almost no traffic on the street. A woman's footprints in the mud lead away from the front door. Tiny heels tiptoeing down the road. Beautiful steps, light-footed, with a lifetime ahead of them. You look up, and the air seems to grow darker. That's Suddenly, fucking dark. You don't want to hear about video rentals anymore. You don't want to hear about any of it. It was all shit. It's over. What was all shit? Kim, I feel bad about video rev revishell 24 hour. You feel sad. We're done. Hang up the phone. It... That's enough for you today. Let's conclude this call. Chucks, what did that mean? I'm not sure. Good. That's a good answer, honestly. Sounds like the business is going under, probably. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Now what, Chucks? Hmm. You're at the end of Tuesday, but not late enough to go to sleep. Where's the backyard wall? I mean, you could go deeper and ask about the container. Go where? Oh, the shipping container you fucked up before. Yeah. You want to try that again? Of course. But it's impossible. We gotta bump up our rhetoric. You're right. You're right. You're right. We ought to bump up our rhetoric. You're so right. Can we bump it up anymore? It's the one time. Alright, well, let's try it again. Don't worry. More skill points will happen. Oh, I know. We're only 10 points away from another one. Oh god, you're right. Just 10 points. It could be anything. It could, it, it could even be success. The hell just... Uh, I popped up now. Well, we can go back and do that. But first, we need to open this goddamn shipping container with rhetoric. 
fucking open it up. Jesus, it's closed. I'm dying to know what's inside. It could be uh, Transformers. It could be Zoids. It could be Gundams. I don't even know. Please, open it up. My, 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 my pre-order is just floundering there with that fulfillment. I'm upset. Amazon lied to me. Amazon lied? I mean, it's not news or anything, but yes, it did. Please, detective, go into the shipping yard. Before the cargo container, its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, well, it seems to have grown well, slightly. We definitely need a twelve. Fucking go die, I guess. And we got a ten. It's always been. Ten's good, though. It's impossible to open a container with the rhetoric. Maybe you're losing your mind. Should we bump up rhetoric again? Not this time. But afterwards, yes. I want you to get into that container. But as it stands, I get it. It's slow. Not right now. But maybe later, though, it'll happen. You just need some spare skill points. And I get this feeling like this game will give you adequate skill points to decide later on what it is you want to do. Well, let's see if we can go uh, talk to Gus. Or Gustav. What was his name? Old man. Who the fuck? Who's with Renee? Gaston. 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 I mean, Gaston probably goes to bed at eight o'clock, but sure, you can try. Not if we make him stay awake. Gaston. Go out the harbor. Very good. Yes, 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 yes. The force. Yes, 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 yes. The force. Yes, yes, yes. South, hard south. Yes, crater. Oh shit! They're still there. They're still playing patonk as we walk through. Patonk. Officer, the mere sight of police in Martinez makes I mean, me try feel safer. It already how can i help you a man so no. principled about his sandwich calls for a principled approach time to get political what is political this right here is political try whichever it's different blood savage what what oppressors <laughs> the lieutenant keeps you sharp glance. To listen to this he utters through clenched teeth and turns back to you. Uh -huh. The jolly man is scratching his head in bewilderment. He does not understand the situation. Let me ask you, comrade. Did you make the sandwich yourself? Look, comrade. The overabundance this sandwich embodies is inherently evil. Nothing. Actually, let's talk about something else. We gotta go too. I really don't understand how my sandwich could. He starts but falls silent. Wouldn't you rather have a proper sandwich? A sandwich with a soul? I don't either, but wouldn't you rather eat a sandwich free of the bourgeoisie guilt ba baggage? I did say that, right? Bourgeois. Bourgeois, excuse me. I said I did Yeah, that. man. Syllables. Who needs what a the fuck cares? Yeah. In, in like 30 years, we'll have clicks and clacks. It's all good. I would rather just have this one, officer. It's really good. He's avoiding your eyes. But imagine... A sandwich absolutely minimal in design. Sleek, efficient, simple. But imagine a sandwich covered entirely in fine metal dust from an industrial plant. The skepticism emanating from the Merry Senior could be sensed all the way to the Seminine Isles. Radiating skepticism. Envision bread. As black 
as the soil it came from. Melting butter, yellow like the sun, shining shining on the backs of the workers on the fields. Salt is essential. There can't be too much, because isn't proletariat the salt of society? Now turn it upside down, black bread, like a symbol, on top, to salute the coal mines our heroes worked. Oh shit, coal mines? Yeah, that's the one. Mm. No, everything would fall off. Look, officer, I'm not a miner. I like different tasty food. Fine dining, not coal. Please, just drop it. Well, we fucked that up. That's okay. We did. Perhaps more stats later will change, because we can do all the effort possible to rob this old man of a sandwich. Indeed. Just fuck that old man. Fuck that old man. Fuck that old man! And his sandwich. Indeed. Well, let's find out if we get that sandwich on the next episode of Grabbing Game Plays, Disco Elysium. Alright, guys. I guess that works. Yeah, we'll have to find out later. See you guys. Bye! <laughs>